Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a divorce certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they will no longer be two, but be one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather again here to be able to worship you today. Dear Jesus, we know that in this past week, there's been a lot of things that we have noticed of how you've provided grace upon us and other things that we've perhaps overlooked. We ask that through the message we hear today that we will be able to experience your grace and your word, and through that we can be supported and encouraged in the week ahead. Please watch over Pastor Julian Jiki as he gives his message this morning. Allow us to be, have our ears open to hear from you. We put everything before you Listen and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be going over a, a word from God based on the passage that was read just a moment ago. If you look at watch TV, you may see all, all kinds of different company commercials that are shown. Amongst them, there's probably a couple of different like slogans that have really stuck in your mind. For example, how about this one? Have you heard it before? More than just the price. It's the Tori company. How about wishing for something good? AM, PM. <laughs> or satisfy your mouth. Latte, it's a chocolate company. And just a little bit ago, there was this other one. Oh, it's bad. It includes bad things. It's oh, you know, a vegetable uh, drink, but it's actually better now. <laughs> so these are different company uh, slogans that you've possibly heard before. Amongst them, you may know about this uh, marriage or wedding company that uh, sometimes has funny commercials. For example, it says... I want to marry you, but it's just like, you know, marriage is a means, not an end. Or like this one, it's like when happiness starts to move, it's sexy. That's another interesting view. Also on SNS information, there's been amateurs who have like tried to make specific slogans and they've had like competitions about it. And the top winner of this particular competition was the following. It was as an amateur who wrote this. Promise moves from the little finger to the ring finger. Beautiful, isn't it? So <laughs> that was the winner of that particular uh, wedding company's competition for a slogan. So why am I telling you these things? Today, we're looking at how Jesus is uh, addressing the issue of marriage. And 
to look at today's passage, we first need to look a little bit on the background. In the first、uh, verse, though, it does say Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. In the previous passage, Jesus actually went from Capernaum,、uh, sorry, to the south area in an area called Perega, Perea. In verse two. It、says some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, "Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife?" So their question was asking whether divorce was actually lawful under that of the Mo- law of Moses. And you would. Wonder why the Pharisees would be asking such a, a question to Jesus, right? And it's because the area Jesus was in, the area of Peria, was actually under the rule of Herod Antipas. And Herod Antipas was one who had actually captured、uh, John the Baptist and executed him. He originally had a wife, but he took his half brother's、uh, wife,、uh, who was Herodias, and took,、uh, and so he divorced his wife to take、uh, his half brother's wife of Herodias. John the Baptist had t- t- condemned this as sin, and because of that, he got upset and had him executed. In the today's passage, the Pharisees are asking this question to Jesus because they knew in that area that this problem of marriage and divorce、uh, was something where, if it was brought to the attention of Herod Antipas, might actually get him to kill Jesus. So they wouldn't even have to、uh, kill Jesus themselves; they just have it, and in this way, they wouldn't have to dirty their hands with this business. That was their goal or intent, anyway. However, Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he was responded in verse three by saying, "Moses, in other words, the law of Moses." And he asked, "What did Moses command you, or the law command you there?" So Jesus wasn't answering their question, but actually asking them a question in return. Why did he do so? By responding with a question, he. Was avoiding any criticism he would have against、uh, his co-、uh, answer if he just answered the question. Today we're looking at how these Pharisees are interacting with Jesus and looking specifically at the topic of the blessings of marriage with three points. The first point today is about the view of marriage in the Jewish society at that time. Jesus. Ed、was asking what was written in the law of Moses about marriage and divorce, and in verse four they responded by saying, "Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away." In other words, according to the law of Moses, divorce was acceptable, and this was actually written in specifically in Deuteronomy twenty-four one, where it says. If a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her, and sends her from his house, and so on. So here it's specifically saying if there was some problem with the wife, then then it was fine for a divorce to take place. But exactly what is this indecent indecent thing that is mentioned here? Uh, over the period of、uh, 1,500 years, from the time that Moses' law was written till when Jesus was walking on the earth, this expansion of the interpretation of what indecent things was greatly enlarged. So, like, if if a woman was snoring too loud, or burnt food, or said something bad about somebody else, these could all be acceptable reasons for divorce. For snoring, there's nothing. There's somebody can control about that, and I really think this is terrible. And if a man found a woman more beautiful than his wife, that was also grounds for divorce at that time. It's just in- crazy to think of what was permitted at that time. But you can see how marriage was actually something that was totally in superiority to men in their favor. So women were 
actually just treated almost there sorry there are countries that even treat people as objects at this time specifically in the mid east islamic countries there is a thing called honor killing that still exists today if a woman in a family behaves in a way that dishonors family honor it is permissible to kill her and in that way they can have their uh, family's honor restored and so what is it that would be appropriate for doing such a thing well if the married woman uh, commits adultery so or if an unmarried woman uh, doesn't marry somebody that was supposed to or if they didn't really refuse if they refuse to wear their hijab head cov covering that also may be grounds for killing them and none of these things apply to a men and these are things that are happening even today in 2010, the UN said that in one year, there's at least about 5,000 cases of honor killing going on. At least that was their estimation. In Hinduism as well, when a husband dies, it is said that it's virtuous if the wife also dies. And this truly is a tragic thing, and it's referred to as sati. And this still exists today as well. So we can see that things such as honor killing and sati even today express this uh, concept of male superiority or male advantage in marriage in Jesus day in the Jewish society as well it was the same case that males definitely had an advantage in the co uh, concept or subject of marriage and they could just get a divorce or basically anything when thinking of that you can see how Jesus responded in verse 5 by saying it was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law in other words Jesus is saying yes in the law of Moses divorce was permitted however that wasn't God's intent or desire but rather in response to the problem of people having hard hearts Jesus also said to the Pharisees that as they were interpreting this uh, concept of divorce, it is not something that is, should be taken lightly, and it should not be something that also gives support or advantage to males either. He encourages them to refer to creation in the concept of marriage in instead. And that actually leads to the second point today, the concept of the blessings of marriage. Jesus refers here to creation and in, in looking at verses 6 through 10 it says but at the beginning of creation God made them male and female for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh so they will no longer be two but one flesh therefore what God has joined together let no one separate in uh, many uh, messages given at uh, wedding ceremonies, it, this is referred to. And, and um, the pastor often talks about how men and women are, are made or, and how when they are married, they leave their father and mother, which indicates how this relationship is to supersede that of the original family. A wedding or a marriage involves some two people who were completely complete strangers to start with. However, all of a sudden, now they are joined in a very um, unique relationship that is uh, for for life. And here, it's talking about being united, and this is not just a, in sexual terms, but also in from spiritual unity a concept as well. Amongst you here today, there are some of you who have been married for a number of years, I believe. And becoming one with your wife or husband is something that you have obviously experienced many blessings about as well. However, in to uh, experience blessings, it's not just all blessings, but there's all kinds of different challenges and, con challenges and conflict that likely you've e experienced as well been all kinds of different uh, trials you've likely gone through as well and I can say this from personal experience and, and so people who are not married yet young people 
would think, oh, well, if I just, um, <laughs> if I get married to somebody I really like, then I'm just going to enjoy life for the rest of life. And so if you say something like this, I'm not going to get married. And it's, you know, it's, it's normal that they would think that because if they, you think of what young people are watching on TV, like princess series on Disney and so on, it's just talking about this princess and prince who just get married and then all of a sudden the story ends, right? And it's a very happy ending and it doesn't give any picture of what it, what happens thereafter. And so when I watch princess movies on Disney with my kids and I watch my wife, who's only looking at the happy aspect of it, I get very concerned because I'm like, if this prince and this woman princess get married, they're not going to have a happy married because they've You've grown up, for example, <laughs> Ariel, who was a mermaid, and uh, that the guy she married was from the land. It's likely they would fight over what they're <laughs> fighting over what to eat. They can't eat fish, you know, seafood because she's from the sea, and it would have been really difficult, I would guess. So what I'm trying to say here is that after getting married, there's going to be all kinds of different problems that occur, and. You have to realize that, and you might, some people might think in hindsight, oh, maybe our marriage was a mistake, but that's not the case. If you think about how two complete strangers growing up in a totally different environment with different characteristics and personalities, of course, it would be crazy to think that there wouldn't be problems. Lifestyle patterns and values, different values in money and uh, different ways of looking at grow, uh, rearing children and so on are all different reasons that can actually cause uh, strife amongst married people. However, when such collisions and differences come about, this is an opportunity to uh, accept the weaknesses and uh, weak points and brokenness of another person. And this is what here Jesus is also referring to as becoming one. When the two become united, they are able to make up for the other person's weak points and take on the difficulties and sadnesses and joys that the uh, their, par their partner is also experiencing. And in this way, they can truly experience blessings of being married. As for myself, I do realize the difficulties of being married, but also the blessings of it, and I am realizing that more and more now. And going through a life of marriage will lead to difficulties, but it's an opportunity when facing difficulties to also experience blessings with the right perspective. Regarding the blessings of marriage, Paul actually mentions in Ephesians about a passage that Jesus was actually referring to. Ephesians 5, uh, verses 31 and 32, the two will become one flesh. Uh, sorry, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. In other words, Paul is saying that this relationship of a man and woman loving each other is that that is reflective of the Christ and the church, in other words, that of us Christians and Jesus. So through a marriage and through the love expressed in it, it's an opportunity to learn and experience more of Jesus' love. There's one man, a Christian, who, uh, whose testimony I will share with you now. In his elder years, he looked back to over his uh, relationship with his wife, and he said the following. He said, when looking over his life, he was able to experience more than anything God's love through his wife because his wife knows everything about him, and he knows that he has some good points, but he really realized that he had many, many more weak and sinful points in his sinful nature. He realized that he had hurt his wife, you know, by verbally, by saying all kinds of things over the years. And there was even times where he thought about leaving with her. He even went to counseling on occasions. However, even through such difficulties, he was able to 
realize and appreciate how his wife never left him. His wife realized that even though he, he was weak, he would, he, she wouldn't give up on him. His wife told him, you know, numerous times, I love you. And every time he heard that, it really, really hit him hard because he realized that she didn't love just the good aspects of him, but she loved all aspects of him. And she was only able to do so because she knew him so well. He realized that through his wife's love that he could experience God's love in how it was unconditional. In a married couple, it, there is an opportunity really to know God's love in a great manner in that way. Jesus continues in verse 9 by saying, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So what God has joined is not to be separated here. What does this mean by God has uh, joined people? Well, it also means that even being mar married and facing very difficult situations, it's the opportunity to remember that God has, is the one who has joined this. He has made this opportunity, and it's not to be broken. God has has selected the best partner for someone to be married married with, and until they die, they are to be remain in that state. There may be times where you think, I can't take this anymore, but at those times, I encourage you to remember to stand strong on this word that God is the one who has brought you together and that it is to be a commitment for life. It's not just something that took uh, part and uh, took place by chance. And in this way, this should give you a strong encouragement. And this is something that only people who both believe in God can experience and understand, I believe. Let's look at the final point today. Number three, recovery from pain. In verse 10, it says, When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. In Matthew, in a parallel passage, it actually says the following, I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another woman, commits adultery. Oh, verse 10. Uh, in this situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. So Jesus is actually saying in, ah, now, sorry, now I'm from Matthew 19, 9. Uh, I tell you, if anyone divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another woman, commits, commits adultery. Here, Jesus is actually saying something quite interesting because he was actually just referring to the creation and now, and from Genesis, and now he's talking about this, and he's talking about how something isn't to be separated, except for in Matthew, it does permit a separation due to sexual immorality. And you can see how uh, serious this must be. Why is it, though, that Jesus desires not that a couple would uh, be uh, divorced, that he permits it, though? It's acknowledging the weakness of humans in their sinful nature. Even though that's not God's desire, with sin involved in, in this world, there may be circumstances in which exceptions may need to be made, and this seems to be one of them. In today, today's world, adultery is a huge problem around the world. If you look on TV, you can see news about you know, famous people going through this almost daily. However, even in much, such circumstances, there is the opportunity, of course, for people to, uh, you know, to turn their hearts around toward God and turn their lives around as well. However, for people who just refuse to, to make that decision, divorce may be the answer. And also, there are all kinds of problems taking place within families, not just adultery. 
for example, people where it's dangerous to be with the, hus the husband or the wife, and there's domestic violence and also child abuse also that's taking place. As for Judah, child abuse, it's in many cases, it's the parents were abused themselves as children. It's about 40% that is said uh, to have had this problem. So any form of child abuse in this case has just kind of passed on in a spiraling effect, unfortunately. It's, we are lacking in today's world for good examples of families, and it seems family relationships and marriage relationships are actually being quite challenged with all kinds of different problems at this time. When you think about this, in this world that we're living in today, the church really has a huge responsibility and role it can play. It's because of Jesus himself that we can have hope for a recovery. By meeting Jesus' love and understanding it, we have the opportunity to be uh, re to recover ourselves and to help others. In our church, we do accept people who are experiencing such difficulties in their lives, and and I hope this continues in the future. Jesus here is. See, a, a, acknowledging that due to sin, there may be circumstances where divorce can be permitted. And that is out of his love, I believe. Today, we've looked at the topic of the blessings of marriage. In the Jewish society of those days, uh, marriage was seen as something that was advantageous to, the, to men. And it was... Uh, but Jesus, that was not in Jesus or God's intent. Jesus actually s expresses his grace toward people who are living in brokenness because of such situations that are difficult. And he can give us the opportunity for recovery and healing. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to worship you again today. Today we've looked at the topic of the blessings of marriage. In today's present day, we know that many families are quite broken. There's a lot of instances where people can't see how things could possibly be better, and they're very distraught and have no hope. However, there is hope. We know that if people come to know the love of Jesus, that there is a certain and uh, hope uh, and true hope. And in this way, we pray that anyone who is experiencing such difficulties, that they will come to know Jesus and be able to gain strength through his love. We also know, Lord, that there are some people who are already married and even and as they are coming to uh, experience their blessings of being united lord we thank you for that as they are learning what it means to love one another we pray that they will be able to learn what means uh, what jesus love means in an even deeper manner in the present day, Lord, we ask that there'll be more examples of good marriages and good families. Allow us, Lord, to be such examples to the world. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Pray in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's pray for a moment in silence. <laughs> 